I look bald with my hat now. What's up, amigos? Zachary, make money mowing. Today, I will be taking you through a very hot $495 workday today, and it will be nine small residential yards, and hopefully I can inspire and show you guys not only how I beat the heat in the summer, but also how I make my own money and inspire you to make your own money and start your own business. One mower, one trimmer, one blower. I work by myself because I'm an introvert and I like my space. So let's get this day started. Let's get this $495 work day started. A really important tip to beat the summer heat would be to start earlier than me and don't start your work day at 8.43 in the morning. As you may or may not know, I do have sick chickens and they require lots of loving in the morning and bottle feeding, so start before me. Start at seven if you can, start at eight o'clock if you can, and the sooner you start, then the sooner you will avoid the afternoon heat wave. But again, I will show you that starting at 8.43 in the morning is not a big deal when you're used to the sun. Another very important thing that helps me beat the heat is to simply go outside and play in the sun more and don't avoid it at all costs. If you sit inside the air conditioner all summer, avoiding the sun as much as you can, of course it's gonna feel hot when you go outside. But if you go outside, you go exercise, you play sports, you hang out with your friends, maybe you play tetherball with your friends in the summer, then the sun doesn't get as bad and you're able to tolerate it better. But again, that's just me in my perspective. I find that when I go outside in the sun, even if it's 100 degrees, if I go skateboard or if I go exercise, when I go out to mow the following day, I'm already used to the sun and it's not that bad. Back when I would go to bed at 2 a.m., I would eat fast food all day and I wouldn't really exercise that much. The sun would beat me up so much when I'd be mowing and I'd be questioning, why am I in a lawn care business? It's 100 degrees outside, I can make money doing something else. But once I started taking care of myself, eating better, sleeping more consistently and sleeping longer hours, I found that I'm able to tolerate the sun much more. I found that I don't sweat as much, which is weird. Maybe I'm just different. And the sun actually gives me energy now versus beating me up. If the sun's beating you up, maybe you should take better care of yourself and see if that helps you tolerate the sun better because it did for me. Now. Whenever I'm outside, I feel like the sun is nectarine and I love sitting in the sun. After I get done mowing, I might go into my backyard and just tan for an extra 20, 30 more minutes, for real. The sun makes me feel good and the sun should make you feel good too. If the sun's hurting you, I don't think the sun is the problem. I think the way you take care of yourself is the problem. Disclaimer, maybe that's easy for me to say because I have brown skin. <laughs> So that's the yard I just did. People think that houses back to back, literal next door neighbors are the ideal way to mow. I don't like that because when a yard is back to back next door to the other neighbor, that means that I gotta knock both out without being able to sit inside my truck and cool off in the AC. I would much rather prefer to drive about 15 seconds to the right, knock out this next yard, even though I got to drive to it, this air conditioner just cooled me down and gave me some fuel and now I can knock this yard out much easier. Ta-da! The customer just wanted these little shrubs to be evened off below the window. I pulled these by hand and here is a tiny amount of debris. 
This little Black & Decker 22-inch hedge trimmer electric powered is so perfect for my business because I don't do very much hedge trimming. And when I do hedge trimming, it's tiny jobs like this. So I can leave this little electric bad boy in my truck. I have two batteries and it will never run out of juice for these little jobs that I do. Little bed complete and cleaned up. Just the shrub trimming and weed spraying. No mulch or anything today. Maybe next time you see this yard, it will have some fresh black mulch. I used to think that wearing t-shirts was the move and I would think that people who wore long sleeves were silly because why would you wear long sleeves in the summer? But let me tell you, a dry fit long sleeve is a million times better than a t-shirt. The sun hitting your skin is what makes you hot. So dry fit long sleeve, dry fit pants or fishing pants, a nice little wee sombrero and those are the main things. Don't wear a t-shirt. If you do, just be expected to have really hot arms. Another tip that I found helps me beat the heat is to get rid of my headphones when it's really hot outside. I don't know why, maybe I'm crazy or different, but when I'm listening to music or Joe Rogan podcasts or YouTube and the sweat's in my face and I'm trying to listen and really take in what the music or what the information is telling me, it's kind of overwhelming. But if I just have earplugs, it just seems a lot simpler and smoother and I'm able to focus on my breathing and get through the yards. So maybe you should try it out. Get rid of the headphones. Joe Rogan can wait, just listen to some imagination and it might feel better. Yard number five complete, so we just hit past the halfway point, and now we're at $280 at 11 a.m. Remember, I started really late at 8.43 in the morning, so for $280 in, I think, two hours, two and a half hours, I'll take a little bit of sweat any day. Trust me, the sun is not that bad when you get used to it. Take, for example, my amigos over here. They're having a dang fiesta. Come party with us in the sun. It's funner than being inside. Another pro tip that I wish I would have known sooner is to drink little electrolyte packages. These little propel packets, they're basically just 200 milligrams sodium a piece. And when you're sweating out a bunch of your sweat, these make you feel better. They replenish you and they give you energy to get through your work day. One more thing to realize also when doing any type of business or any type of work is no business is perfect. If money was no object and I had a million dollars, do you think I'd be mowing these nine yards in a Texas July time of year right now? I'd probably be in the Philippines or in Hawaii because I got that island blood inside of me. But I'm doing what I'm doing because I'm saving money, I'm charging what I'm worth, and every single work day that I complete is getting me closer to being in Hawaii or the Philippines. So just realize no job is perfect, everything has pros and cons, but you just gotta pick a job that has a lot more pros than cons, and then that way you'll be able to make the money that you need to be making. One mower, one trimmer, one blower, no trailer, one Zachary, and lots of $495 work days. Another thing that you have to pay attention to in order to be successful in your business is you need to find your ideal type of customer and you need to only take on those ideal types of customers once you get past the point of being comfortable. In the beginning, you do have to take on as much as you can. That's what I did. That's what you'll have to do. You have to say yes to lots of different jobs, even if they're not your ideal customer. But take it from me, as long as you stay in business, you will be able to get to the point where you're having so many callers, you're getting so good at advertising that you could pick very specifically which yards you want to take on. Where I live at in Texas 
it's not like every single home is a tiny little residential house like that. There's half acres, full acres, those crazy urban houses with crazy landscapes and trees everywhere, those types of houses. Those houses are all around me, but I market hard so I could pick from all the callers my ideal type of customer. For example, this yard right here, a tiny little residential yard with tiny little landscaping, small beds and small shrubs. That's my ideal type of customer. I would love to take that customer on. If somebody calls me and they have a third acre of a property and they have shrubs everywhere, I don't care what they would pay me to do it, I'm still not gonna take it on because it's not my ideal type of customer. Another thing also is I find that for little yards like this, I have much better margins compared to when I used to roll around with my trailer in my Gravely. I make much better margins on tiny little $50, $60 yards like these, and it's less labor on my body. I get to get back into my truck more often because it's smaller yards and I get to sit in the air conditioner and I just enjoy it so much more. So it just goes to show you should experiment with your ideal type of customer. You might be the opposite of me. You might like a zero turn. It doesn't matter. We're all gonna make money regardless, but just find your ideal type of customer. For me, little residential homes with tiny landscapes just like that are perfect so I can maintain it by myself easily. If it's a big, crazy landscape with yards of mulch needed to make it look good, I'm not gonna take it on. But if it's a tiny yard like this with a little tree ring, I'll take it on. So find your ideal customer and market hard. So as you can see, this yard was pretty much completely dead. The past two weeks when I came the last time, it just died out. There was a little bit of growth two weeks ago, but now it's pretty much all sunburned. There's two things you can do in this situation. So me and this customer have a verbal agreement to where I'm gonna come every two weeks, no matter what, whether it's springtime and it grows three times as tall, it's the same price every two weeks, or in the summer, if it grows a little bit, it's still the same price every two weeks. You could just continue coming as per your schedule, or you could do, which is what I'm probably gonna do right now, is just text the customer and tell them, I think we could just let the yard go once a month per mo, if that, and we could just resume back to the bi-weekly come fall because the yard's obviously not growing right now. It's kind of hard to let go of money like that, but it feels good morally. And by doing that, you're just making the world a better place and the yards are gonna be there no matter what when you come back. Another thing I also have to go over and remember to go over each video is, you might think my yards are poor quality or you might say, where's the grass? It's just weeds and dirt. So as a lawn care business, I tell all of my customers they should water regularly, they should fertilize regularly, they should top dress, aerate, they should do a lot of things to their yard to make it look healthy if they want it to look healthy. A lot of my yards, they simply just want their yard to be mowed every two weeks, every week, and that's it. They might water it, they might not. They might fertilize it, they might not. At the end of the day, they just want it to be mowed, and if that's what they want, I'll do it as long as I offer the other services to them. Every yard gets mowed, trim, edge, and blown the same. They all get the same amount of love. Some of the yards just have higher grass quality than others. At the end of the day, I'm gonna do what the customer wants and if they want it to look like a magazine cover, we'll work on that. If they just want it to be mowed because of the HOA, then we could do that as well. This is just an example of what these yards look like in this current neighborhood. As you can see, a lot of them are pretty ugly. They're just weedy. Not hating, just showing these actual yards. So you can say whatever you want about my yards, but my yards look pretty average to their surrounding neighborhood that this yard is in. So I'm just showing you guys what I'm working with. See, that's a look, that was a good looking yard. That's a decent looking yard. That one's pretty weedy. This one's pretty weedy. That one's pretty weedy. You get the picture. Just showing you some more yards in my area. A lot of these yards could use some watering and they're obviously not getting the watering that they need, but that's just the name of the game and that's the cycle of life. These yards will all be lush and green come fall just like every single year so you just gotta roll with the punches and accept summer to be a dry time of year that's a good looking yard but back to the dry ones
two more things to make your life so much easier in the summer. One, make sure your mower, your trimmer, your blower is fueled up the night before you get started. And two, make sure you have an extra spool on hand because you don't want to be playing with this guy in the heat when you're frustrated because you were almost done with the backyard, but it broke on you and the string fell apart. So now you got to do this and you got to walk back. Have an extra one on hand. Make sure your stuff is fueled up before you start and you'll have a much smoother day for work. And that was a $495 simple workday mowing nine yards. It wasn't even five hours. I think I'm 10 minutes shy of five hours. So below five hours, you can make 500 bucks. If I could do it, you could do it too. Look how simple my equipment is. A mower, a trimmer, and a blower. You don't need a lot to do a lot. And I just want to inspire and show others that you can make your own money. You can become your own boss. If this simple 26 year old half Filipino, half white introverted skateboarder can operate a long care business at this level, you can do it too. It's now, I believe, 100 degrees. I'll put the weather right here. It's hot outside, but again, it's not that bad when you take care of yourself. When you eat good, you sleep good, you don't eat greasy foods, you're not going to sweat a lot. I'm not even covered in sweat. It's just like a cakewalk at this point. If you enjoyed the video and you want to learn more about how to start a lawn care business, I am working on online courses on marketing, advertising, legalities of a business, how to quote properly. The website link will be in the description. I'll see you guys in the next one. I'm about to go get a slushie or something. Peace out. Ah, I can't get a slushie because I just said I could eat healthy. I'm probably going to eat a banana. I'll get you later. So I just have to get used to explaining how I price my yards whenever I make a video where I'm showing the actual pricing of these yards. And the simplest way to explain it is... I don't care what the average price of a yard in my area is. I charge what I feel like I'm worth, and I feel like I'm worth a lot, and I feel like you're worth a lot as well. I don't care if the average price in my area for a yard this size is $30. I'm worth $40, $45 because I do a good job. I do all the work by myself. I show up when I say I'm going to show up. I have a clean truck and a clean appearance. My customer service is A1. I reply to a customer as soon as possible. If they want to call me and ask me a question, I'll answer it. I'm flexible with them when it comes to scheduling as long as they're flexible with me. There's so many things that go into the price besides just how much to mow my yard. And I think a lot of people don't understand that. If the customer wants to just have the front and back mowed for $20 whenever they want, not on a schedule, then they can get someone who's doing it as a side hustle or a part-time job to come and mow their yard for 20 bucks. Or, on the other hand, if the customer wants a legitimate business to pull up to their house week after week, month after month in a professional look, in a professional truck, who's going to show up when they say they're going to show up because it's their full-time job, me for example, then they can pick me. If they want the side hustle for 20 bucks, then they can do that. If they want me for 50 bucks, then they can pick me. I don't put a gun to their head and say, you must use me when I give a quote. I simply say who I am, what I'm about what I can bring to you as a lawn care service, and then they can pick me if they want. And I've had so much success with that. I just don't know why people think that yards have to be 10, 20, $30. You can be the most expensive person in your city. I keep saying this, I'm pretty sure I'm the most expensive person in my city when it comes to lawn care. And I'm proud to say that because I work hard for my money and the work that I do and the customer service that I have reflects that. You should just charge more straight up. If you charge 40, charge 45. If you charge 30, charge 35 after this video. It's all about money, that's why we're working. I'm here working, I know the value that I can bring, I charge a rate that I feel like I'm worth, the customer agrees with it, they pay me, and they pay me week after week, and then the business keeps going, just like that. You just have to realize, you have to price these yards at a price where you can happily show up week after week to maintain these yards. If I have a yard for 50 and the customer talks me down to 40, which I don't let people talk me down no more, I used to, 
But if someone's locking down to 40, then every time I do the yard, I'm gonna be thinking, damn, this is a $50 yard, but I'm doing it for 40, this sucks. Stand firm by your price and just charge a rate that will make you happily come out to this yard week after week. And that's the only way to build a successful business. You're not gonna build a business by just trying to get the smallest price because you're scared of the customer not giving you the answer that you wanna hear, which is a yes. Charge what you're worth. And if a customer doesn't want you, then just move on to the next one. There's a million yards that you could take on. We don't chase them, we replace them.